as can be dis expected after the previous bit about focal cortical dysplasia type 2, there's also a focal cortical dysplasia type 1. Initially, there were only two types of focal cortical dysplasia. In one, there were, was abnormal architecture, and in type 2, there was abnormal architecture and abnormal cells. In 2011, clinical and radiological findings were taken into account as well, and a third type of focal cortical dysplasia was added with hippocampal sclerosis, a tumor or vascular malformation, or because of acquired abnormalities. Focal cortical dysplasia type 1 is epileptogenic, but usually not visible on MRI. And it took me a while to find a case in literature with a Apparent MRI abnormality in proven focal cortical dysplasia type 1. The majority of cases have a normal or near normal MRI. Sometimes you can have secondary findings, such as hypomyelination of the white matter on this coronal inversion recovery image and a smaller volume of the left temporal lobe on the T2-weighted images in a patient with an FCD type 1. In this 8-week-old embryo, the formation of the cortex can be seen with proliferation of the stem cells near the ventricle, migration of the neurons along the radial glial cell, in the intermediate zone, an organization of the cortex in the cortical plate. And there is the subplate between the intermediate zone and the cortical plate, which serves as a waiting room for the neurons before they enter the cortex. This is a schematic drawing with the radial glial cells in blue and the neurons in purple. And when the neurons have entered, the cortical plate, they have to detach from the radial glial cell so they can move horizontal and make connections, synapses with the other neurons. If something goes wrong with the detachment from the radial glial cells, this results in neurons that are arranged in micro columns. They cannot make normal synapses and that's thought to be the reason that FCD type 1 is epileptogenic. There are also some heterotopic neurons in the white matter that further contribute to the epileptogenic nature because it impairs the U fibers and it might form a plexiform epileptogenic network. This is a normal cortex, and if you compare the cells in an imaginary voxel in FCD type 1 and in the normal cortex, you see that it's the same cells. So that, this explains why it is so difficult to detect on MRI. Although FCD type 2 is much more dysplastic, on histopathology and MRI as FCD type 1. The prognosis of FCD type 1 is worse because of the wide extent of abnormalities. It is difficult to find the margins and when surgery is performed, patients with FCD type 1 are more often not seizure free. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will continue with cortical malformations.